it's Thursday afternoon and we're busy packing up and as you can see we were seriously loaded but I think we were just so excited to be heading back into the Kalahari. It's half past five and we're on our way to the Kalahari, uh, heading to Deception Valley. But first off, we must fill up with fuel. Uh, all our jerry cans were full. Uh, we're carrying a total of 80 litres in the jerry cans and 60 litres in the car. But yeah, soon we were on the road heading uh, to the Kalahari, about just over 300 kilometres uh, from Mouth. in the sky we cross the Boiteti River. This is the last water we will see until we return this way again. Uh, the river is pretty dry at this time of year but it was still a beautiful sunrise and I just stopped there to take a look at the uh, battery make sure it hadn't rattled loose and as you can see the veterinary fence road and this runs for about 80 kilometers uh, is not a great road it's very corrugated very sandy but as you get closer to the Central Kalahari Game Reserve, the road does get better. Soon it was time to make a quick stop for cup of coffee uh, before we head back on the road again. Uh, at this point we were almost at the veterinary gate and so we left in high spirits uh, knowing that the end of this uh, horrid road was in sight uh, but as you can see still very bumpy. Uh, but we were driving along and soon we did finally reach the veterinary gate where we signed the register uh, just to let uh, them know who's going through and we also have our vehicle sprayed uh, for foot and mouth. from the veterinary gate to the Central Kalahari Game Reserve entrance is actually such a nice road and it, was, it wasn't very long before we arrived and it was a great, a great feeling even though we still knew we had another 45 kilometers uh, to Deception Valley. But here we sign in, uh, do all the paperwork uh, which is not very complicated. We spent a bit of time here because I wanted to get an extra night and in the end we were able to get an extra night in one of the wilderness camps and we'll talk more about that later mm -hmm. but first of all let's have a look at what sightings have been seen wild dog had been seen and I was quite excited um, I really do want to see the deception wild dog um, they have a lot of uh, white uh, white uh, markings I think a bit more white markings than other painted dogs uh, so it was uh, something I really wanted to t keep my eyes open for. But as you can see in here, uh, the road uh, to Deception is not too bad and it didn't take us uh, very long before we pulled into Deception Valley. I love this place. It is one of the most beautiful places, I think, in Botswana. Uh, it's so isolated, uh, so calming, and yet at the same time so wild uh, and untouched. This was going to be an epic adventure. Adventure? Adventure. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
soon arrived at our campsites, we were staying in Quarry Camp 4, which all the Quarry Camps are absolutely beautiful. And here you can see me, I was just walking to the bathrooms there. Um, but a beautiful campsite. Uh, Quarry Camp 4 is a little bit different because um, the road basically drives right through the bottom of the camp, uh, whereas the other three Quarry Camps are a little bit more private. Uh, so this is the most uh, public, as uh, you could say, a public um, campsite. Now these are the Quarry Campsites are all government campsites, and so uh, you have to book through the Department of Wildlife. But we found uh, that the booking process was actually really simple. Uh, once you got the, the email addresses and um, the telephone numbers, uh, everyone seems to re reply very promptly. After the tents were up, it was time for a little afternoon nap uh, during the heat of the day before we would head out once again uh, for an afternoon game drive. We generally head out at 3 o'clock. So here it is, uh, 3 o'clock, and we head out, uh, which is a bit early but I do like to get ahead of the crowd if that is at all possible. And at least that way, as the sun starts to set and it gets a bit cooler, you can make your way back towards camp, um, but you're on the far side of the reserve, uh, so you're not really crowded out by the vehicles. part as you go uh, along and, and drive the Deception Valley uh, you're driving uh, through the valley itself but there are a few loops uh, that you can uh, shoot off to the side and explore uh, so you got the Deception Loop which is called the Deception Loop and it's got some beautiful grasslands and a little tree island scattered trees as it were it's not a big loop it's actually really small um, and then the second loop, which is a little bit further on, uh, is a deception pan, which is a big grey uh, pan. And during our few days that we're there, you'll see us uh, passing this pan a few times. Um, but those are the two main loops that people drive. And of course, then just basically driving up and down the valley itself. <laughs> sun setting uh, we started making our way slowly back to camp uh, the Kalahari has some of the most beautiful sunsets I think in the world uh, with it with the dust and the haze and the huge um, skies you just get these spectacular sunsets and sunrises and so as you can see 5.50 for almost six o'clock uh, we're heading back um, but yeah what a beautiful sunset and uh, watching the hymns book chasing each other as a sunset is really beautiful.
was um, a magical morning with the sunrise and just to find these uh, lions with their cubs uh, just walking right in front of our camp in the pan. Uh, it was really, really special. But uh, soon more and more vehicles uh, started to arrive. But that was when I noticed that just down the road uh, there was actually a big lie, uh, male lion uh, lying by himself. And so we decided to go and spend our time there with him. And this was actually for the best because uh, with no other vehicles uh, with him, we got to spend some time uh, together with him and watch the sunrise, drink our coffee. Uh, and there were so many vehicles with the lions and the cubs uh, that they in fact uh, chased them off uh, out of the pan into the bushes. So we did make a mark on our map where those lionesses and the cubs uh, were heading and you'll see that after we uh, say goodbye to this guy, we actually drive around the back and we find where the lions and the cubs have settled uh, so that we would be able to find them later on. But here we are uh, just enjoying the sunrise and watching this guy uh, chilling. And it was really, really special uh, just to uh, have your coffee and watch the sunrise and chill out with a big male lion. Really beautiful. where the cubs and the lionesses had settled for the day um, we moved on uh, back to camp because my allergies were really acting up I don't know if it's the dust or just the Kalahari um, so I had to come back and pick up some allergics uh, before we went on with our game drive but you get a good sense of what the campsite looks like and how the road kind of goes through the bottom of the camp <laughs> As you can see here, we are in 
uh, deception pan. It's actually got these little succulents growing all over the pan with these tiny little pink flowers. Uh, really, really beautiful. And I'll just show you a close-up of those flowers now. But just before, uh, there's a, you'll see here there's a lot of guinea fowl. And I notice that the guinea fowl do tend to hang about in this pan. I think it's always a very good idea to hang about uh, flocks of guinea fowl. You never know when a leopard is crouching around. Didn't see a leopard this time, but maybe next time. And these are those, those succulents, really beautiful. My better half has a very strict rule on safari and that is that we get back to camp by 11 o'clock for breakfast. And so as you can see cutting it a little bit fine with only six minutes to go uh, it was time to get back to camp and get breakfast going. And it was a great breakfast, bacon and eggs and this time we even had mushrooms. And uh, I must say there's nothing quite like a bush breakfast of bacon and eggs after a morning game drive. It's absolutely perfect. Well, after a nap and some breakfast, I decided to take you along and show you our ablutions. Uh, so this is the shower, and unfortunately, some other tourist has stolen the hanging shower bucket. So no hanging shower bucket in this shower, um, which is really sad. Uh, so please, if you are visiting any of the other camps where the bucket shower is, mm, try not to take it with you uh, when you go. Uh, but this was the long drop and yeah, that's not very nice. Um, as you can see, that is a poo mark and nobody wants to sit by a poo mark. To be honest, I just used the little spade. It was time for gin and tonics uh, before our three o'clock game drive uh, to head out uh, into the park once again. Well, once again, we left camp at around 3 o'clock, but this time I decided to drive to Leopard Pan. I was under the misunderstanding that there was a waterhole in Leopard Pan, and in fact, the waterhole is not in Leopard Pan, but in Sunday Pan. But anyway, we still drove to Leopard Pan, uh, which, was a, which was a lovely drive, um, and when we got to Leopard, Leopard Pan, I saw that actually it wasn't that far to a Sunday Pan where the waterhole was. Um, I must say the waterhole uh, has never delivered very greatly for me. I've never seen anything amazing or exciting at the waterhole, um, but I did want to have a look at it. And our two friends uh, from Denmark, they wanted to have a look at the waterhole too. And so, it was just, um, as you can see, seven kilometers from Leopard Pan uh, to the waterhole uh, in Sunday Pan. And so we drove along there, and there it is. That is the waterhole in Sunday Pan. I do hear that at times you can find a lot of 
a game around here and I think if you are into bird watching you'll probably see a lot of birds here um, but for us it was just a nice little stop and we made some more gin and tonics and some nice crackers a little bit of brie a little bit of steak from last night so it was pretty good but with the sun setting uh, I really wanted to be back in deception but on our way we did find these honey badgers and they were pretty cool I must say I do love honey badgers and there are plenty of them in the Kalahari now these two uh, I don't know if you can see oh, there's the other one um, they were great and they were just digging away creating so much dust it really was uh, beautiful to watch them we just parked there and I watched them for a bit they were pretty cool and pretty chill they can be a very aggressive apparently um, but they were fine it was a very overcast day so not a very spectacular sunset um, but it was a sunset of kinds uh, and as you can see getting back to camp we're very close to camp here this is um, just a down the road and so we watched the sunset and then came back to camp uh, to make ourselves some dinner always steak and potatoes morning start once again paid off and basically in the exact same place as we found them um, the day before we found them again just walking down the road and as you could see those lines with the cups they basically just chilled around the vehicle coming right up to the car especially the baby cups very inquisitive and so once again it was coffee with the lions and that is pretty epic Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Well, it was pretty epic, and we spent quite a uh, quite a long time just uh, watching these lions uh, playing on the road, and definitely. Uh, this is a strong personal belief is that if you do find a sighting of lions uh, or any predator don't get too close because all you will do is push them push them away and so if you do park um, you can park pretty close but not too close uh, as long as they're comfortable and as you can see we parked not too far but at the same time not on top of them and this really allowed them to be relaxed and comfortable in fact after the after a little bit they actually started to come closer to the vehicles because obviously they're very inquisitive and uh, so it was really beautiful we just got to hang out with these lions but of course uh, it doesn't take long uh, any place on safari before other vehicles start arriving which is fine um, but after a little bit there's more vehicles than lions and uh, that's when you know it's time to go uh, really i think if they are like, if you are one of four vehicles, then you know it's time to leave. Um, preferably, you really want it to be only two vehicles at a sighting, uh, three, four at max. Um, so we, we spent some time with these um, these lions, but after a while, it was time for us to move on, and we were fine with it. We had spent long enough with these lions, and so it was nice to leave them to the rest. And we left and headed on uh, to uh, do the loops. We are going to go up to Deception Loop and uh, do the Pan Loop. To be honest, I have never really spotted anything in the Pan Loop, um, but it is a very open area, and I think uh, if you're looking for the cheetah, uh, those two loops are going to be key areas where you want to look, uh, which is the uh, deception loop and deception pan loop. Um, so yeah, that's what we head out to do, and yeah, what a gorgeous sun sunrise. And of course, had to stop and have a look at those lion prints along the road. Unfortunately, after turning up to the deception loop, uh, I soon discovered that there were two vehicles uh, behind me. So I did a little U-turn and just went on to deception pan. Uh, I really don't like people following me, and I don't think uh, I don't think it's really right. You know, if somebody invites you to follow you uh, to a sighting, that's a, a different story. Um, but just to follow people in the hopes that they will lead you somewhere. Uh, I don't think it's going to do anybody any good and it just makes people annoyed at you um, and I think this is also very important for us as self-drives to make sure we don't follow behind uh, safari vehicles uh, of course once again if the safari vehicle uh, invites us to do so maybe they say you know I know where there's a leopard down the road you know just follow me now that's fine but just to to tag behind a safari vehicle uh, loaded with guests uh, is pretty rude uh, so I know there's a lot of safari guides who, who really complain about that and don't like it when people do that. Uh, so I think, you know, your chances of finding a game by yourself is just as high as if you were going to tag behind somebody. So, yeah, little rant over. Uh, but yeah, we made it back in time for breakfast at uh, 11 o'clock and yeah, bacon and eggs again. Uh, what a better way to start, start your morning. Well, it was soon time to pack down camp and head to our second camp. We only had two nights at the Cory camp. And then our third night would be at the Wilderness Camp, which is about 15 kilometers uh, from Deception Valley uh, towards the, the National Park gate. And so we packed down after breakfast and we wanted to move, set up camp, and then we'd be able to come back uh, to Deception again and then just spend the day in deception. So fueling up, uh, it's always a, a fun job. 
must say, uh, these jerry cans with this attachment uh, for filling up are really awesome and would highly recommend. But yeah, here we are, loading up. Not so heavy anymore. We've definitely used a lot of fuel and used a lot of water. But there we go. Um, it wasn't a big move. We didn't pay too much attention to our packing uh, this time because it was just 15 k's down the road. And so that's what we head about doing. Well, here we were, 15 kilometers down the road, and we're at Wilderness Camp 8. And it's a little campsite right in the middle of this uh, pan, not a very big pan, a small pan, uh, at the edge of a little tree island. The campsite itself doesn't really have many trees to talk of. There's no shade. And it was so hot, so we just focused on setting up our tents and unpacking and then heading back to Deception. Uh, basically, we set up the tents, drove back to Deception, and then uh, parked ourselves at our previous campsite, Campsite 4, and sat there and made lunch and some snacks and waited for the sun to cool down. But yeah, uh, this is us just leaving um, Wilderness Camp 8. It's a very hot camp, but a beautiful place to look at the stars at night. Uh, but we just went back to Deception and uh, spent the rest of the day uh, they are uh, looking around and exploring. sunsets in the Kalahari, we would have one last epic surprise. It would be the best surprise ever on our way back home. bed that night happy and well contented the Kalahari has been good to us and the morning a beautiful sunrise perfect for a cup of coffee so only morning without the lions but a good morning nonetheless can't have coffee and lions every morning it was time to pack down the tents and get ready to head back to Maun Honestly, the Kalahari is a magical place and 
thanks so much for watching if you've got this far and you've watched this all the way to the end please leave a comment and tell me tell us about your highlights um, me and my wife uh, look forward to reading all your comments um, all your suggestions all your uh, adventures if you've if you've traveled here to deception to the kalahari uh, leave your highlights in the comments uh, look forward to reading them but thanks so much for following us along um, we really enjoy making these videos um, it's a lot of fun and this is only really our second proper video we've made um, and we hope that uh, as we uh, continue we'll try and get better and better at it um, but it's a lot of fun and we really enjoy uh, filming and, and sharing it with you so once again thanks so much for uh, watching please like subscribe it really means a lot thank you bye